slowly, sexy, swaying my hips like a panther in stealth mode. Oh my god! There I go! Ah, Saturday. Time to get up. Ah, sleeping so badly. Come on, it's Saturday. A little bit of office work done, and then freedom for the rest of the weekend, which is literally just one day. I love office life. I run through my usual morning routines in a good mood and humming a song all the way to my job. Good morning. Morning, Mr. Arias. You look cheerful today. Am I not always cheerful? <laughs> I've given up on the notion of arriving before Gabriel. I'm 100% sure he must be in his office already at work. I knock on his door. Come on in. Oh, George, it's you. Take a seat, please. I've checked the work you sent me yesterday afternoon. All right, I sent him the task right before leaving in the evening. And many corrections to do? No, no, they're fine. But I've seen you haven't finished with all the reports yet. I promise you'll have everything done before lunchtime. Great. Let me remind you that you'll be out of the office on Monday and Tuesday, so I won't have my reliable assistant to count on. I hope you remember to schedule my week ahead of time. Of course, Gabriel. You can check your online calendar for next Monday and Tuesday and ask me for any clarifications. Good. I knew you'd do a good job, George. Then have fun at the startup convention with Mr. Garwal. Remember to always speak highly of our company when you're in front of him. I always speak of our company with the utmost regard, Gabriel. <laughs> oh, by the way, that's that crooked grin of his again. I wonder what he's scheming now. Do you have any plans for this weekend? For this weekend? Well, having lunch with my family on Sunday and probably meeting a friend in the afternoon. And for your Saturday evening? Don't tell me a healthy young man like you spends his Saturday night sitting in front of a TV or playing talk duty. <laughs> well, I don't know yet. Why are you asking? Ah, nothing. Just out of curiosity. You can leave now, George. Have a great day. And he suddenly all but forgets about me. <sighs> Time to work. I greet my co-workers and soon we are all set and focused on our own task. While checking the pile of written reports and notes on my desk, something catches my attention. A black, thin card. I'm pretty sure it doesn't belong to any of the corporate assistants I met at the convention I attended this week. Especially because of the text on bright silver letters. VIP Pass, the Imperial Meeting Place, Saturday Night Event, Cruising Zone, Glory Hole, Pole Dancing, Sexy, sexy Show All Night Long? Uh... Oh! Where the hell did this card come from? I quickly cover it with both my hands and cast an anxious glance around me. Nobody is paying me any attention. All the export staff seem to be at work, so it's not a prank, or at least not by them. I turn sideways and lean forward slightly, covering my screen from any prying eyes. Let's Google the name of the club. Oh, that's a nice website. The photos show an elegant, smooth place. The perfect environment to enjoy the best experiences, it says. A safe and original space. Two floors with a total of more than 700 square meters where you can enjoy varied amenities. Ask the staff about our VIP program. I take a good look at the cardigan. VIP pass, it says. Huh. Sounds exclusive and expensive. The photos in the websites look really tempting. Many attractive guys, both muscular and twinks in little more than black leather briefs, and it's been ages since the last time I went cruising for sex in a gay club. I cast a final glance at the card, sigh aloud in nostalgia, and put the card away in my wallet. I should focus on finishing my long list of tasks in time and leave my longing for sex clubs for another moment. A few hours later, I finally managed to finish checking all the reports. Thank goodness. I thought I'd have to do overtime, but... Seems I'm getting better and better, and most importantly, faster. I wanted to bring some leftovers from yesterday's dinner for today's lunch, but in the end I forgot my lunchbox in the fridge. Never mind. Now I have another excuse to go up to the cafeteria. I take my stuff and leave the exports office. Everyone has already left. As usual, I wonder if I should ask Kevin or Jacob to have lunch with me, in case they haven't left for the day, of course. Uh, Jacob! 
I look for Jacob in the nearby offices, but almost everyone is already gone. And there's no trace of Jacob. Which means I'll have lunch on my own. What? I look around when I step into the cafeteria in search of any familiar face, but the place is almost empty today. Never mind, I can check my social media and the news while I eat. It's nicer to have company, but there's nothing to make a drama about. Oh, come on! I needed- I wanted to go out with, like, some hot dude! Fine, let's go have lunch with Kevin! Freaking Kevin! I haven't seen Kevin around today, so my guess is he must still be in the storeroom. If he hasn't gone home, that is. My guess turns out to be partially right. Kevin is busy tidying up some cupboards on the open office area of the 10th floor. He's so absorbed in his task that I need to clear my throat to call his attention. <clears throat> George! <laughs> Don't tell me I gave you a fright again. Uh, sorry, I didn't see you coming. I noticed you were really focused. Yeah. What about going up to the 16th floor for lunch? I'm almost done here, if you don't mind waiting for me for a few minutes. Nah, of course not. Let me help you. No need, please. Sit down and wait for me. If word gets out that you're helping my task, I might get scolded. I haven't thought of that. It shouldn't be like that, though. In my previous jobs, at least, whoever finished their task first and wasn't in a hurry to leave would help the others. That way, the team was more united and the atmosphere was better. But given how the other guys seem to act around Kevin, I trust his words. I sit down and watch him work, feeling awkward. It doesn't feel good at all, resting while other while a co-worker is carrying stuff from one cupboard to another. What am I, a little prince who can't move a finger to help? When we finally go up to the cafeteria, the place is almost empty. Good for us, less waiting time. Kevin looks a bit absent. I wonder if his mind is still at work. What would you like to eat? What are you having? Uh, I'm not sure yet. Let's have two of that then. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so he likes meat. He really likes meat. I don't know about a pot roast of mashed potatoes. Uh, definitely not the green beans. Uh, ooh, pot roast of mashed potatoes? Right choice! The smell that waffle salad this plate is divine. Thank you, George. No problem. I don't know why, perhaps it's just my impression, but he doesn't look as lively as other days. Are you still getting lost? Are you still getting lots of last minute tasks? No wonder you're so tired. You should really talk about this with your co-workers. What? <laughs> George, please, just drop it. I'm okay. It's the end of the week after all. It's normal to be worn out. Don't tell me you aren't a bit weary, but of course you got the chance of attending a convention this week. Hey, that was a lot of extra work. Don't think I went on vacation, please. I'd also like to go to a convention. A night out in a nice hotel with nice company. What are you implying? Nothing, just that I hope one day I can go with you to one of those business trips. Uh, <laughs> man, I do not like Kevin. <laughs> Why is he flirting again? That's flirting? You call that flirting? That That's barely anything. I thought I made it clear that I was only interested in him as a friend. Anyway, at least now he looks somewhat cheerful, although it's pretty obvious he's still worried about something and is only making a brave face for my sake. Are you going out this evening? This evening? I still haven't made plans for today, to be honest. Liar. Wait, what? But before I can ask him why the hell he's calling me a liar, even if it's with a playful tone and a wink, he quickly changes topics and I forget about it. Can't I be tired too after a long week and not feeling like making plans for the weekend? Because I certainly am. I can't wait to arrive home and do nothing for the rest of the day. Finally at home. Man, I'm beat. I feel better, more fresh and relaxed after a good shower. Now a few beers, my cozy sofa, and a little bit of good old TV are all I need to be happy. As the hours go by though, my mind keeps going to a certain card I have in my jacket's inner pocket. That elegant sex club. Before the TV program ends, I'm already turning the card in my hands, examining it with great care. Is this my father's doing? Has he paid someone in my company to put this VIP access card between my things? To tempt me? To check how mature and resolute I am? I wouldn't put it past him, to be honest. Then I could just go there and have a drink, enjoy the environment. It seems there's a show, so I technically wouldn't be doing anything wrong or questionable, even to my father's eyes. 
I think I'm getting paranoid. Okay, let's decide about this. I'm too anxious to keep watching TV anyway. I deserve a night out. I checked the club website again. It doesn't say anything about the dress code. Huh. Since it looks like an expensive place, I guess wearing my suit will be the best option. I toss my favorite t-shirt in my backpack anyway. If I feel overdressed, I can always change in the restroom. A last glance to those pretty boys in tight speedos on the website. Damn, I'm getting excited. Nightlife, here I go again. After a light dinner, I take the subway downtown again. The club is right in the heart of the city. An inconspicuous double door with just the name of the club in neon lights. However, the moment I cross the doors and the bouncer takes a quick look at my card and welcomes me in. Loud bass punctuated techno music assaults my ears. The lights are soft. The decoration are as lavish as I expected from the website. And the guys all look either like preppy cute things or like your typical go-getter, front-runner businessman. Not exactly the kind of place I used to frequent, but since the bouncer told me the VIP pass comes with free drinks, I'll try and make the best of my night off. I down two whole rums of coke before daring to start a conversation with someone. The guy next to me is waiting for his date, he nervously says. Dad disregards him as a potential lover, which is a bit of a pity, also not really my type. He looks and smells nice, but his smile seems out of a dentist promo. So, first time here? Uh, yeah, you're regular, right? <laughs> Not really, but regular. But I come now and then. The parties are awesome. You definitely must come when there is one. I'll definitely try to. He leans in so I can hear him despite the loud music. Today there's like an open mic night, but for pole dancing. What do you mean? Whoever wants can go up on stage and offer an impromptu pole dancing show. Isn't it fun? Now that he mentions it, there's an area clearly meant for that in the center of the huge main room. The stage is surrounded by tables, most of them already occupied. You think someone will really volunteer for dancing up there? Of course! Give it some time. It's still early. He winks at me and downs the rest of his drink in one go. Ah, oh, that was good. Hey, barman! Another one, please, and another for my friend here. Huh, I haven't finished mine yet, but okay. Not a minute later, someone finally dares to go up on stage. I wonder if he's doing it willingly or if he might have lost a bet. <laughs> the show is rather clumsy if we compare it to what a professional pole dancer can offer, but shit, it's so hot. Before I notice it, I'm starting to feel constricted by my shirt collar. I undo my two higher buttons and loosen my tie a little bit. See? It's even sexier when it's not a professional doing it. Yeah, you're- Oh my god, look at me! He suddenly looks me up and down with a crooked smirk on his handsome face. You should volunteer after him with your tone body. You give an impressive show. <laughs> me? Dancing like that? I haven't danced in months. But perhaps because I'm on my third drink, the idea doesn't seem so far-fetched. Why not? I've always enjoyed dancing, and my party buddies used to say I was pretty good at it. Come on, he finished. Just for fun, huh? I slam my empty glass on the bar counter and stand up. Yeah, I'm going. My new friend claps my back with enthusiasm. My liquid courage does the rest. The first beats of a new song resound in my ears, way louder here on the stage than in the bar area. I caress a metal pole and sway my hips to the slow beats of the music. Around me, the audience clap their hands and holler at me. With a smirk, I take my jacket off and throw it off the stage, offering the rhythm of the music. Everyone cheers at that, and I hear some yells of SEXY among the onlookers. <laughs> they still haven't seen anything. As the rhythm slowly increases its pace, my hips gyrate accordingly. I grab the pole with both my hands and dance against it, lifting my ass and undulating my body in a suggestive way. I'm already sweating. What's up with all those spotlights? With a grunt, I unclasp my belt and let my pants slowly go down my thighs. It seems to impress these spectators, but to be honest, I'm not doing it for their sake. I'm all sweaty and my clothes are in the way. I can't even hook my legs around the pole with my pants on. So off they go, among the loud cheerings of the audience. The shirt! Take it off! Good idea, Anon. I pull my tie down, loosening the knot until I can take it off my head. And I, then I go for the buttons. 
watching the public with the same intensity they are watching me. Slowly, sexy, swaying my hips like a panther in stealth mode. Oh my god! There I go! The reactions of the public is immediate. They stand up and holler at me at the top of their lungs. They wanted a show, right? I'll give them a show. I hook my arms on the pole above my head and rub myself against the coldness of the pole. First my ass, then my front, offering the onlookers a good view of my ass and my muscled thighs. I keep dancing, my moves halfway pornographic, using the pole as a lever substitute, holding it close and dry how big... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I know I know this is meant to be sexy, but like just the word dry humping is just sending me. Oh god. Damn. All the grinding and the excitement of being watched and wanted like this. It's given me the hardest erection ever. I cover it with one of my hands while I hook my leg around the pole, trying to be modest, but failing all the way. I can feel the hungry gazes of tens of eyes, all of them fixed on me. If before I felt hot, now I think I could melt on the spot. Take everything off! Go to full Monty! Come on! The voices start to chorus, Full Monty! Full Monty! And despite feeling desire like this is mind-blowing, I suddenly feel a bit scared. They wouldn't be allowed to climb on the stage and gangbang me, right? There's, there must be a lot of security in a place like this, except if they think that's what I was after, that is. A bit dizzy, I decide not to wait until the song ends. I crouch to gather my clothing and shoes and walk away. The stage in two wide strides, followed by disappointed boos. Sorry guys, it was fun, but enough is enough. I escape through a dark hallway, where I find a small waiting line in front of a door. I slip away the closest door before anyone notices me. Exactly what I needed. The restroom. There's a couple making out on top of a sink, but apart from that, the place is empty. The perfect place to calm down and regain my senses. I use the toilet and then discard my sweaty shirt. Disgusted. I couldn't be happier of having brought an extra t-shirt. When I go out of my cubicle fully clothed again, the couple has left. I look myself in the mirror and proceed to wash my face and throw water over my whole head. Ugh. Much better now. I won't deny I'm still tipsy. And horny. My heart on refuses to cooperate with me. I'm forced to wait a couple of minutes, cursing loudly until it finally starts to subside. So, I walk out to the hallway with a half mast on, covering my front with my jacket and heading to the exit as fast and discreetly as I can. At least I've gathered enough fat material to take care of it once I reach the intimacy of my home. Wait. Wait, what? Wait, what? Ah, uh, Sunday at last. I smack my phone to make the alarm stop hurting my ears and turn on my side to keep sleeping. Some minutes later, I realize I won't be able to sleep anymore. My brain is already trained to wake up at 7am and I, it doesn't understand the concepts of days off, it seems. Doesn't matter, I turn again on my back, place my hands behind my nape and stare at the ceiling, feeling extremely comfortable and cozy. There is no rush to get up today, so I can enjoy a slow morning, take things with ease. It's been two weeks since I started work at Infinity's export section. I may as well do a bit of balance. I think the work is going fine. More than fine. It's going great. Despite Flunky, the booking of our rooms at a convention hotel, and the struggle with the company programs, I'm pretty happy with the quality of my work. And my boss seems to be equally happy with me. So unless something big happens, I can confidently tell my father that this part of his request is fulfilled. My apartment was already approved. I've managed to quit smoking, more or less, and now I'm only a social drinker, to which my father gives a pass. Also, I should try to reduce the amount of alcohol I consume if the intensity of my hangovers is any indicator. I stay still until the room stops spinning and my headache becomes bearable again. Note to self, don't try to sit up too quickly after you drank a tad too much the previous evening. My mind wanders to the guys have met again, some of them after years of not seeing each other. It feels so creepy. Doesn't mean I'm not happy to see them again, of course. I was shocked of bumping into Gabriel under these circumstances, but he's a really cool guy, and besides being one of the hottest men I've had the luck to boink, he turns out to be an agreeable boss. Kevin is a different story altogether. He's cute, but it's obvious he's going through a lot right now. Anyway, I'm glad to have the chances of showing him I'm not the heartless monster he thinks I am. And same can be said about Jacob. 
He's so serious and stern, but somehow I enjoy his company. And he's the kind of role model I look up to. So it would be nice if he stopped thinking I'm an immature idiot. Ivan, on the other hand, seems to think highly of me. Why? That's a complete mystery. Unless he's still the same old, gentle, good-natured guy from our teen years, who would never think badly of anyone. If I was to choose a potential significant other among them, Gabriel would be the perfect choice. He's hot, has a nice personality, and he's loaded. However, he doesn't seem to feel the same towards me. More than a passing attraction. Damn, that stings. Jacob, there's still lots of sexual tension between us, among other types of not resolved tension. I really would like to get closer to him again, go back to what we were starting to have. Well, I don't have to decide just yet, right? Let's take this easy. I'm taking things seriously this time, so no need to rush anything. Today's lunch with my father has gone better than last Sunday, mostly because we avoided talking about work and focused on talking about family members. I better get ready to meet Jacob at the mall. He hates tardiness. I'm meeting Jacob downtown in front of a famous shopping mall. Oh, hey! Ooh, I love his fit. Despite doing my best to leave home early, the subway took longer than expected, and I ended up arriving five minutes late. There you are. Sorry, the subway is to blame it. Spare me your excuses, please. If you're going to be late, you could at least text me. Uh, you're yeah, right. I didn't think of that. Why doesn't it come as a surprise? Oi! Are you going to spend our date criticizing me like you do in the office? If that's the case, just tell me now and I'm leaving. What date are you talking about? We're just meeting to buy you sports clothes. As friends? As friends, co-workers, acquaintances, does it matter how you call it? Friends accept each other as they are without being absolute fastidious about everything having to be perfect, you know? He rolls his eyes and gives me a gentle push towards the mall's doors. What can I say? I won't apologize for being a perfectionist. And I hate having to wait in the street. Come on, let's go already. This shopping center is big, with many floors full of brand names and top-notch restaurants. There are also spaces for teens and children, of course, like every possible fast food chain. A multiplex movie theater, an arcade, a bowling alley. Since I have no idea of where Jacob wants to go and this place is huge, I head for the board with the store's directory, but Jacob grabs on my forearm to stop me. No need to check that out. Just follow me. Okay, I trust you. As you should. I spend the next hour following Jacob around. Despite we are supposed to be only buying a new gym outfit for me, he insists that I try on an awful lot of clothes. Another one? It's the last one, I promise. He said that four stores ago. Wait, aren't you having too much fun with this? Do you just like seeing me stripped down and like dre dressing me up like a Barbie? Is that what you like? <laughs> Took you a while to realize it. You... If I'm being honest with myself, I'm also having fun. Not my increasingly aching feet or with bumping against teens and busy women with a hundred shopping bags. No. But the way Jacob's eyes shine every time he finds an outfit that he wants me to try on. His enthusiasm and, and especially the hunger in his eyes when he checks me out with each new set of clothes. I won't deny I'm enjoying it. Jacob looks so handsome in casual clothes, more approachable and relaxed than in a suit. However, that's all in the eye of the beholder, as they say, because his personality is as bad as ever. Don't sit like that. You're wrinkling your pants, see? Really? Could you stop that, please? You're worse than my mother. Well, maybe you need a constant reminder on how to behave in society. Same as you need a constant reminder to stop being a prick, I see. What's your problem? I'm only giving you tips on how to improve. What's wrong with that? You're being overbearing. That's what's wrong. Have you ever heard of respecting other people's boundaries? Or even better, have you heard of relaxing and stop fussing over trifles? He seems about to reply, but in the end, he closes his mouth and resorts to glare at the floor, sulking like a child. That's for people who can actually afford it, which is your case, or you wouldn't be where you are now. You mean my position in the company? That too, just... Oh. Forget it. Look, I apologize for going overboard. I didn't realize you were getting upset. I'll try to be more restrained in the future or to stop hanging out with you. Whatever you prefer. Why are you taking it so seriously? Come on. I never said I didn't want to hang out with you. However, that's how I am. I can try to keep my comments to myself and not bother you, but this is who I am. 
I don't mind you thinking badly of me all the time. Just don't say it aloud. It's not just that. In fact, it's not that, you idiot. I'm not constantly bad-mouthing you in my head. It's just that for me, it's important to strive for perfection. I still have many books to read, many movies to watch, a lot of knowledge to absorb, a lot of workout to do. That too. I want my body to be like a perfectly oiled machine, and to achieve that, I can't laze around. Okay, Terminator, can we go for a drink now? <laughs> my saliva's wasted on you. Nah, your enthusiasm is really contagious. It's only that I'm tired and I already purchased my new outfit for the gym. My paper bag swings teasingly in front of his face. Well, I guess you deserve a beer. Or two. Let's stop in one. We leave the mall and it's loud music and voices and have one beer at a nearby bar before calling it a day. In the end, even though Jacob can be a jerk sometimes, I have a good time. Copying his attitude towards life wouldn't be so bad, especially now that I've resolved to lead a life of a responsible adult. But Rome wasn't built in a day. I'm still a work in progress, and he could also learn to be patient with me. Alright. Is it the next day already? It is the next day. Monday again. Wait a moment. Today I'm traveling with Ivan to the startup convention. Damn, I'm gonna be late unless I leave and let me check. 15 minutes? No! I should have changed the time of my alarm! How could I forget? I shower, shave, and brush my teeth in record time, but now I'm dressed and there's no time left for even coffee. Never mind, I'll have one on my way to Ivan's office. To my chagrin, Ivan's car is already parked in front of his company building, and he comes out and wants to greet me and introduce me to his assistant. Jorge, this is Jen. How do you do? She gives me the most formal handshake ever, but she looks nice. 30-something, a bit on the nerd side, with a natural, ever-present smile and an awful choice of clothes. Well, Ivan never cared much for fashion anyway, so his assistant's looks are the least important feature for him. I chuckled to myself, wondering what Jacob would have to say about it. The startup convention takes place in a convention center in the neighbor town of Y. Yvonne drives us there in less than an hour, while Jan prattles endlessly and is starting to give me a headache. Yvonne just nods, smiles, and replies with monosyllabics whenever Jan lets him intervene. I resort to listening and trying not to fall asleep. I really need a coffee. This place is huge! Where exactly are we heading? Yvonne has a meeting at 8.45 with a startup company called... Oh, and there's another meeting at 9.15. This one with... First of all, we'll have a hot beverage. I'm sure Jorge needs it, judging by his face. And we have enough time for it, right? <laughs> you don't need to go out of your way for me. I'm here to observe and help whenever I can. I check my watch. It's 8.30 a.m. If we hurry up, we might make it. All right, but please don't be late to your meeting. It gives a bad impression. I'll go to make a check-in at the hotel reception, and then I'll go straight to the meeting room. We are assigned to meeting room 3. Please remember it. Of course, no need to remind me so many times, Jen. The woman shrugs and leaves us alone. We take the escalator down to the main area of the con, lively with people coming and going and busying themselves, placing all their promotional stuff on their tables and stopping to talk to the passers-by. There's a coffee stall right here. Cover me. So, please tell me, how does this work? You've never been to a con with a meet-to-match option before? Nope. Well, you fill in a questionnaire with information about what kind of companies you're looking for. The startups do the same. And then we are paired and given time spots for the startups to pitch their projects to the investors. Usually in a meeting room, although sometimes it's just a corner of the main hall, with all the noise and people around. Whoa, so they'll give you a presentation about their company and their project, and you must choose if you're going to invest in them or not. Wish it was so easy, but basically, that's the point, yeah. My goal today is to get to know as many interesting companies as, as possible. Then, at a later date, Jen and I will contact them with further requirements and a second meeting. If both parts are happy with the agreement, then we can proceed. So you won't make a decision today. Unless I meet an exceptional company. And that's really rare, so no. Will you have time to take a look around the tables? I hope so. We have left some breaks between meetings for that. 
But sometimes we also have impromptu meetings with people who simply approach us in the hall without any previous appointment. Is that allowed? <laughs> You'd be surprised. More deals are sealed in the bar and in parties than in a meeting room, they usually say. Is there a party this evening? If you have the energy to attend, I'm usually beat by dinner time. You can go on my behalf if you want. Nah, nah, I was just curious. I'm sure Jen would like to attend. She seems really energetic. Nah, she's worse than me. All that high energy of hers is depleted rather quickly. And by the time the tables are starting to put away their stuff, they're... she's usually yawning. <laughs> Didn't expect that. The meeting room Ivan has been assigned for the con is small. Especially once the four people from the startup, Ivan and I, sit at the table. Jen arrives not a minute later. She seems to be as efficient as she looks. She sits down after shaking hands with everyone and opens a laptop in front of Ivan with all the data they have about the company. I could learn a thing or two. The four guys from the startup are very young and their leader keeps tugging his tie down. As if he was unused to wearing one. He's so nervous during his pitch that I have to hide my grin behind my hand. When the meeting finishes, we have less than five minutes until the next team arrives. This was more entertaining than I thought. The poor guy was really nervous. Yeah, he needs some personal improvement. I can't imagine him defending their project in front of a meeting board. And if they pass, the third meeting would be exactly that. You mean in front of the big fishes? He nods. Yeah, I'm a no one after all. I'm only the first filter they will meet, and the next meetings won't be so amicable. I see. And did you like their company? He shrugs. It depends on the rest of the companies we'll meet today and tomorrow. The competition d dictates what's a safe inversion and what's not. I hope you deem my company a safe inversion. He turns serious at once. I'm not allowed to talk about that with you. Sorry, Jorge. I would if I could. Eh, yeah, no problem. I was sold to put a good word about Infinity, not to gather confidential information after all. The next team is already at the door, so we sit down again and the next meeting begins. Oh man, so tired. <laughs> already? Want another coffee? I've had too many, so I'll pass, but maybe I'll join you with tea. Tea is always the best option, much healthier than coffee. I know, but tea doesn't wake me up in the mornings while coffee does. Uh, that's my phone. Sorry, Jorge. Yeah, yeah, of course. Don't worry. His phone doesn't stop chiming the whole day, but the way he looks at the screen before taking the call tells me this time it might not be work-related. Huh. His parents, probably? i have spent the day running errands for Ivan and Jen, happy to make myself useful. Observing is rather boring after all. After the first three meetings, all of them seem to... All of them seemed a repeat of the previous ones. I don't know how Ivan has the patience to be so kind and encouraging with all the teams. Constantly smiling and making questions and nodding, even in the worst case scenarios, when the team leader was so nervous they completely forgot his pitch. He's so mature and cool. Completely different from the Ivan I used to know. Well, we had grown to be more confident in college, but in our high school years, he was always a mess. Way more similar to those ambitious but inexperienced startup members who got tongue-tied in the middle of their presentation than the cool man he is now. I'm back. Sorry for keeping you waiting. Is something wrong? Was he a parent? His phone keeps pinging with message notifications. Someone is either impatient or has a lot to tell Ivan. Uh, no. Nah, it wasn't them. Never mind. Where's Jen? It's time to have dinner. His assistant waves at us from a distance. We walk towards her and leave the main hall. We have dinner at the hotel restaurant. The hotel is next to the convention center, so most of the attendants stay here. Now I understand why Ivan said some teams would approach him outside the meeting rooms. The moment we finish having dinner, Jen bids us good night. The poor girl looks completely beat, and she has barely spoken from the moment we left the con. I guess she must reserve all her energies for tomorrow's meetings. As for Ivan and I, we kill some time in the corner of the hotel hall, sitting on the comfortable but outdated sofas. Man, how are you still standing up to talk and walking all day? To be honest, I'm one second away from falling asleep on top of this coffee table. That's not a bad idea. These sofas are really comfortable. It's going to be hard to get up from here to go up to our rooms. <laughs> Please, don't remind me. I don't want to move. But I'm happy to see you in action. You've changed a lot, Ivan. In a good way, I hope. 
Of course. Look at you. Where's the clumsy, too tall kid who used to hide whenever someone teased him? I was lucky to have a best friend who always stood up for me. Eh, do you still remember how we met? Ugh, I wish I could forget it. There were those guys in our school. Whoever pissed them off, even back in their first year of middle school, they would gang against that person. Yeah, they wouldn't hit you, but they made sure your life at school was hell all the same. The leg out to make you trip and fall flat on your face in front of everyone. Make your chair fall back when you're about to sit down. Whatever they could do that would pass as the other person being clumsy or absent-minded instead of their doing. Our teachers knew, of course, but they rarely had enough evidence to ground them, and they didn't mind being grounded anyway. So that day, they were bullying you in the restroom, and right when they finished their stupid charade trying to coerce you into giving them money. We heard a toilet flushing, and you went off your cubicle with a deadpan face, elbowed them out of your way, and washed your hands in the sink. The leader of that small gang couldn't believe his eyes. <laughs> Then you turned towards him and asked him to stop pestering me, or you'd send the head teacher a voicemail with a recording of everything they'd said. Damn, I was trembling. I was afraid the guy would tear my phone off my hands and break it in pieces, and then beat me to a pulp. So you sent the recording before they could even react. I didn't know what else I could do. Never dreamt of facing those guys. They were big and aggressive, so it was either having them expelled or I was dead meat. Well, they were lucky. The recording was all the head teacher needed to finally expel them. I don't want to think of what could have happened. Otherwise, rip, jo rip, Jorge. Yeah, but it worked. Nobody had dared to face them until then. You were such a hero. I was such a jackass. Better said. At least school life had brewed for you. So after all, I'm glad I had the gall of facing them. Yeah, things were never the same after that. Even though they were still dumb guys who pester me sometimes. You were there for me from now then. The best friend one could ever hope for. Ah, you're gonna make me blush. You were always a great guy, clever and talented, so it's their loss if they couldn't appreciate you. I'm glad you could. An uncomfortable silence lingers between us. We should call it a day and go to our bedrooms before things turn even more emotional. But I want things to get really emotional and physical. Can I not, can I not smash the investor, dude? I, wa I wanna. Yvonne, no! We take the elevator to our floor, still in silence. Our bedrooms are on the same floor, although not next to each other. The convention goers seem to be in the mood for a party, and they push us, as they push us inside the elevator with them. We must insist them to carry on with their drinking without us. Yvonne shrugs at me, slightly embarrassed. And they left. At last. <laughs> They're so energetic. How are they not exhausted after the con? No idea. I've been half asleep for hours now. Yeah, let's do like Jen and turn in early. Sure. We keep staring awkwardly at each other. I should bid him goodnight and walk away to my room. He doesn't want anything else, right? Or does he? Was he planning on sleeping together? Did he invite me to join him at the con for that? What are you thinking about, Jorge? Ivan is not like that. No matter how much time has gone by, he's still a shy, decent person who would never sleep around. I think... No, I can't imagine him having a one-night stand. And even if he had one, it would never be his ex-boyfriend from college who broke his heart to pieces. Then, why is he not leaving? I stare back into those piercing dark eyes. I gotta say, I love Yvonne. I love Yvonne. Like, I know that being with him is gonna be incredibly spicy. Well, maybe not as spicy as Gabriel, but still. Still. I wouldn't mind giving him a goodnight kiss. Would he get angry if I did? I'm gonna kiss him. Why would I not? I take a hesitant step forward. He parts his lips in surprise and does the same. Yay! <laughs> we meet halfway, our lips barely touching, our hands stuck to our sides, not daring to make contact, until Ivan finally lifts his hands and grabs my sleeves. Just that. I close my eyes and enjoy the heat he irradiates, the burning sensation of his lips. It takes a long moment to gather the courage to allow our tongues to go out, to lick each other's lips, to kiss the corner before sucking on the lower, fat lip lightly. And it feels tender, like a dream, a short moment, a barely there shared warmth, before all ends and we rest there, our lips still a breath away, our eyes half-lidded, staring at each other. Huh. We should go to sleep. Right. Um, good night, Jorge. Rest well. See you tomorrow. Yeah. Thank you.
Oh, dude, what the hell just happened? I closed my bedroom's door and my back and rest against it, trying to clear my thoughts. This is not what I had planned. My plans included keeping a good facade for my company's sake, getting to know my old childhood friend again. Making out with him was not on the table. What if he got angry? Or if he reacts coldly towards me tomorrow? But he did seem to be expecting this. Right? He's not the kind of person who would casually kiss someone without any further meaning. So that means he's eager to have something else with me. Part two of our relationship. How though? We have talked about many things, but not about a breakup. There's still an open wound between us. Am I looking forward to talking about it? To trying to figure things out? Uh, I need to sleep over this. Deeply confused and a tiny bit aroused, I confess. I changed into my sleep clothes and, got, and go to bed. Come morning, we resume our work at the con after a quick breakfast. I hope you rested well last night, because we have a full agenda from now to lunchtime. Are you ready? You obviously recharge your batteries, Jen. So full of energy first thing in the morning. The secret is avoiding all kinds of caffeinated drinks and stick to orange juice and ruibos. I gaze down at my hot cup of coffee, slightly ashamed. Ivan chuckles, winks at me, and toasts his own cup of black tea. I find a good English breakfast is the perfect way of waking up in the morning. A small amount of thein or caffeine aren't that bad for your health. Right? Oh, by the way, it has come to my attention there is a company we should definitely try to talk to and give them our card. It's not on our schedule? No, either our schedule was already too busy and the organization couldn't find a spot for them or the other way around. But my contact says we'll be definitely interested in them. Damn, she's good at her job. I feel jealous, to be honest. All right, then. Try to locate them and we'll approach them right before leaving for lunch. The first team with an appointment is already at the door, so they leave the topic and gesture them to go in with a polite smile. The morning goes by rather quickly, with a meeting starting every 30 minutes. Some of them only last a few minutes, while others go way longer than half an hour spot they had. When the last meeting ends, Jen goes out to the main hall in order to find the team she wants to contact at all costs, and we are left alone to rest for a while. Are we gonna bang right here in the meeting room? Is that what's gonna happen? <laughs> oh, always forget how tiresome these events are. Almost regret asking you to come. After all, you had a con only last week. This might have been too much. Ah, don't worry. In this case, Jen is doing the job I had to do with Gabriel, and I must say, she's way more competent than I am. Well, you're new after all. Give it time. Yeah, I need time and experience, so I'm really glad you invited me to join you. The experience has been really valuable. We rest in comfortable silence for a few minutes until it starts to linger and become slightly awkward. Should I use this chance to bring up a more delicate topic? Building up my courage, I take a deep breath and open my mouth to speak. At the same time, Ivan does the same. You know, back then when we broke up, I have a girlfriend. No! <laughs> what? How come? What were you going to say? You'll never know. Sorry. And what's that about having a girlfriend? Are you bi and I never knew? Uh, no. He casts his eyes down, uncomfortable. I bet he's regretting having said anything, but the cat is out of the bag now. It's too late to back down. She's my best friend. My parents kept asking when I was gonna get when I was gonna bring a girlfriend home, and it was also convenient for her to pretend to have a boyfriend, so So you're Oh my god, he's got a beard. Oh. So you're faking a relationship in front of your family. Great, this is just great. Wait! Are they sleeping together? No, oh, I have no right to ask him that. It would be in bad taste. I shake my head in bewilderment. You're angry. No, of course not. I'm perplexed. And it makes me sad for you. Why, Ivan? Is there really any need to lie to your parents? It's not. Just... It's not just my parents, in fact. I told you because I don't want you to say anything out of line in front of Jen. Right, she's your assistant after all. So she knows your girlfriend. He nods, embarrassed. Jen chooses that moment to come back to the meeting room, beaming. I found them! Come on, quickly! They're waiting for us in the main hall, and they were already leaving. Sure, let's go. Jen and Ivan share some words with the team. 
barely a two minute chat and exchange professional cards before the team leaves. We have lunch at a hotel restaurant, but the conversation is almost as scarce as during yesterday's dinner. Not due to exhaustion like last evening, but about how tense Ivan and I feel in front of each other. He keeps staring back at me with a mute request for silence. I acquiesce, feeling mentally tired. After lunch, all the startup teams pack up their stuff, leaving the tables empty and soulless. Ivan has a couple of last minute quick meetings in the hall, but soon we take his car and drive us back home. Man, I'm so tired. After all, I think Ivan was right, and two conventions in two weeks was too much for my poor body. I spend the rest of the day on my cozy couch, watching movies on my favorite streaming service. And now it's Wednesday, my dude. Ah, <sighs> feel refreshed. Look at this sunny day. It's almost a shame having to go to work. I hum all while having a shower and a good shave. Toast and coffee for breakfast, and I think I'm ready to go. During all the way to work, I keep thinking about how well Gabriel might have been without me these two days I've been out. On one hand, it was his request, and with all the preparations I made before leaving, I'm pretty confident he was alright without me. But on the other hand, of course, I don't want him to be too well without my help. First things first, I should pay a visit to my boss to check everything is in order. It's exactly 8 o'clock, so I'm sure Gabriel will be already in his office and ready to start working. It's favorite boss man! Ah, oh, George. Good morning. Sit down and tell me everything about the con. Did you have the chance to talk with Mr. Garwal about our company? <laughs> I try, but Ivan is rather secretive. I expected that much. Well, as long as you tried. Did you have fun? Was it interesting? I proceed to give him a summary of how the startup convention worked. What details Ivan focused about each company and so on. Gabriel nods of interest. Looks like you learned a lot. I'm glad I asked you to go. It seems you had fun with Mr. Garwal. <laughs> I hope you didn't have too much fun with him. You two look closer than I thought at first. I don't know what to say. I never told Gabriel much about Ivan's and mine relationship, only that we are high school and college friends. What the hell? What is he implying? Does he think last night went the same way as when he and I spent the night at a hotel? Wow, Gabriel, if this weren't you, I would think you were jealous. Me? Jealous? <laughs> no way in hell. We had the chance to remember some old stories from our college years. Yeah. By the way, were you alright without me? Oh yeah, but there are a few things that came out that I want to discuss with you. And here he is, back to his business persona. Never fails. Gabriel and I spent a good part of an hour talking about his agenda for this week. Full of new appointments to make and of reports to ask for and edit, as always. I greet my co-workers and offer them a short summary of my days off at the convention before finally sitting down in front of my computer and turning it on. The list of tasks ahead might be rather long, but I'm starting to feel comfortable doing them. After all, they are all more or less the same every week. So the work feels familiar and easy. So easy, in fact, that soon my mind starts wandering. Now that I had the opportunity to spend more time with the guys that have appeared in my life again, I regret how things ended with all of them. All four had the potential to become my perfect match, my life partner. How could I mess things up so badly and so many times? I shake my head in frustration. Alright, at least now I have a second chance to behave like a decent person and try, one, try to win one of them back. Which of them should I choose? I think Jacob is the right choice for me. So far, there's been a few mishaps between us, but nothing I'm not still in time to fix. With this in mind, I decide to search for him as soon as my lunch break starts. No luck finding Jacob on the 14th floor, so perhaps he's already up there. We'll see. The other option is checking out the gym, but I'm honestly too hungry to keep going up and down the building after him. Uh, there he is! He must have come early because he's already sitting at a table with two colleagues, although he seems more interested in his phone than in their conversation. I grab a turkey and salad sandwich from the shelves, pay for it, and walk to Jacob's table. Hey, I can sit here, right? My colleagues nod in agreement, but they were already leaving anyway. They gather the trash on their trays and carry them to the bins, leaving us alone. <laughs> Jacob clears his throat and offers me a tiny smile. Well, how was the convention? Any good? Uh, yeah, of course. The startup's convention. 
He looks at me like the idiot I am, obviously wondering how I managed to get lost in a two-sentence conversation. I was distracted, okay? A direct look at his face almost makes me get lost again. Damn it, Jorge! Focus! Focus! The convention was really interesting, yeah. I learned a lot, especially from Jen, Yvonne's assistant. I took many mental notes on things to improve from her. Yvonne is... Mr. Garwal, right? I was aware that the two of you knew each other from college, but I still wonder why he asked Mr. Miller to let you attend that con with him. Actually, Yvonne and I were best friends in high school and then in college. We lost contact later on and haven't seen each other in years, so it's normal he wants to reconnect, don't you think? Friends, you say. Knowing you, I can guess what kind of friends you were. I shift to my chair, nervously. I wish I could tell him off and state that Ivan wasn't my lover, but then again, who was I trying to fool? Oh, please, stop it, would you? Of course. As far as I'm concerned, you can do whatever you want, even using your list of lovers to get in the good graces of the higher-ups. It's good to have context, right? It's not like that! You're misinterpreting everything! So Mr. Garwal is not a past boyfriend. Lover? Whatever? See, I wasn't wrong. But he's just a friend right now. Of course he is. You know what? You don't have to give me any explanation. You haven't changed at all. Exactly! I don't want to give you any explanations because you and I are not in a relationship, so you don't have the right to get jealous. Jacob violently stands up and hisses. Right. Exactly like last time, I guess. He takes his tray with a lurch and hastily walks away to the exit. Jacob, wait! And he's already gone. I bite my lower lip in distress and turn again towards my food. In the end, the remains of my sandwich are binned a moment later because all my appetite has vanished. I better get back to work. However, I can't concentrate in my long list of tasks. The conversation with Jacob doesn't sit well in my stomach. Do I feel guilty? I don't think there's reason enough to feel guilty. Although it's true that we were in a relationship of sorts in the past, just nothing serious, only a casual fling between two guys who had fun together. Honestly, I don't get him. One day he hates me, the next he goes and kisses me. I shake my head in desperation. Wait, he kissed me? When did I kiss Jacob? Did we kiss? I don't remember. Memory from a long forgotten night comes to mind out of the blue. We were walking down the street, and our friend Troy, and maybe someone else, can remember. We were in the nightlife district surrounded by the neon lights of a nearby restaurant, theaters, and clubs. And Jacob and I were bantering about something as always. I suddenly spotted a really good looking guy and gestured towards him with my chin, smiling with the confidence of being young, attractive, and to my own eyes, a hundred percent immortal. I tab that. You would tap that. You would tap anything in tight jeans and a dong between its legs. Not right at all. I have standards. I looked around until I saw a guy in his 40s who didn't, who didn't look interesting at all. See that dude over there? Well, I would never do him. You better. You're doing me right now. Whoa, that's right. Weren't the two of you supposed to be together or something? Jacob's face dropped. He stared at me dead serious, but I laughed it off, oblivious to Jacob's reaction. <laughs> That's the word, or something. Jacob is my pal, and nothing will change that, right, Jacob? Jacob made a non-committal sound in his throat, which I took as an agreement. See, and about sex, oh, nothing beats banging someone who truly understands you. That's the best sex ever, don't you agree? Troy shrugged, not missing the way Jacob looked everywhere but at me. I would say now that he was clearly upset. I don't know, George. Never slept with a friend. I'd prefer to draw a clear line, you know, in case things turn awkward. I looked at them in confusion. Only then I noticed the way Jacob was gazing down with his hands in his pocket, in a sour mood. Oh, come on, Troy. You're ruining the mood. Sorry, dude. Hey, if that works for Jacob and you, then I'm happy for the two of you. <laughs> Trust me, it does. Man, I'm awful! I couldn't help but ponder about how Jacob felt during those days. Were we really in the same wavelength? Or did we have different points of view about our relationship? Different expectations? My working hours are drawing to an end. I let out a tired sigh and get up from my chair after turning my computer off. Hey, George. You coming with us for a drink? 
Uh, and here I thought they would never invite me to join them again after finding out I'm not much into baseball. Huh? You sure want me to join? I can tell you right now I didn't watch yesterday's match. Absolutely. No baseball talk today. Promise. He makes a Boy Scout promise and we all share a chuckle. Okay then. Let me grab my stuff and I'm ready to go. There's a good chance of meeting Jacob at the bar after all. I feel a bit embarrassed right now, but some liquid courage might be exactly what I need to face Jacob and have a heart to heart with him. The bar is packed with office employees and soon I'm surrounded by a sea of dark suits and stern looking ties. Jacob is nowhere to be seen though. Perhaps he's still at work or in the gym. Mal, tell George that thing Lola told you the other day. Wait and see George, it's hilarious. My co-workers are unusually friendly today. Huh, not that I can complain about that, but I don't know, it feels a bit fake. By the end of my second rum with cola, highlighted by the absence of a certain black-haired grumpy guy, I decided to lay my cards on the table. All right guys, there's something you want to tell me, but you keep beating around the bushes. Do me a favor and spit it out. Because I'm already tired and ready to go home, so whatever it is, I guess it's either now or waiting for another occasion. Oh, don't leave just yet. They share a pointed look, as if they were mentally playing rock, paper, scissors to decide who's going to spill the beans to me. It seems Miles lost the game. He clears his throat, clearly uncomfortable by the conversation. Well, we've heard some rumors. What kind of rumors? Is someone gossiping about me? About the company. More specifically about the export section. About the... From who? From another company's workers or from our own? They share another nervous glance. We can't say names, but... There were from more than one person. In short, they say our section is going to be drastically reduced, so we might lose our jobs. You get it? I freeze in panic. Look, I'm the last one joining the company! That means my position is the first one that would be cut! A layer of cold sweat has got has started to go down my back. Have you heard something about it? Gabriel must have mentioned something. I shake my head no, pressing my lips until they turn white. I told you, Miles, he knows nothing. He wouldn't be so cheerful and happy every time he comes from Gabriel's office if he knew. But he cannot stray from source. George, could you ask Gabriel about this? You're his assistant and you two get along well. If it's you the one asking, I'm sure he will confide in you. Yeah, please! We need to know. It's been weeks since the rumor started and we can't keep living with this tension any longer. Alright, alright. I'll try to extract as much information as I can from Gabriel. I can't assure you that he will tell me anything. As far as I know, the company is happy with our sales, so perhaps the rumor is just a hoax. I wish. Yeah, but anyway, it would be great if we could clarify the situation. I'll talk with Gabriel first thing in the morning. Crap, exactly what I needed right now. Even though I'm still very worried about my co-workers, as soon as I get home, a not-so-small part of my mind shifts to my previous concern. Jacob. I turn the news on the TV, reheat a frozen lasagna in the microwave, and sit on my sofa with my dinner and a beer. After my so-so lasagna is gone and my stomach feels pleasantly full, I finally dare to take my phone and text Jacob. Perhaps talking with him via phone messages will be easier than talking with him face to face. Hey Jacob, you okay? George, what do you want now? I want to apologize for being such an asshole during lunch. You're right, even and I were dating back in college, but... <sighs> Although I'm really happy to see him again, I only see him as a friend now. You can trust me when I tell you I have no interest in him. As I told you earlier, it's fine. That's none of my business. I don't care who you're sleeping with, okay? I'm telling you that's all in the past. Look, I know I was a dick when the two of us were together. George, I don't want to talk about this, so please drop this subject. Good evening. Would you rather have a voice call? Wait. I'm calling you. He's not answering the phone call. God damn it. I sign defeat and throw my phone on the coffee table. I think the two of us will feel better if we talk things out. And even if we end up yelling at each other because of how things turned out during our short relationship in the past. Before a conversation to take place, both parts need to want to talk. I can't force him if he's not willing. And it's Thursday now. Alright. Ah, another day of work! Man, I feel so tired. The conversation with my co-workers popped suddenly in my mind. Damn it, it's true. I need to course Gabriel to tell me what's happening. I jump out of bed and go straight to the shower. I have a white coffee and cookies, but 
I don't have the patience for cooking a proper breakfast or lunch. I want to arrive to the office as soon as possible. Gabriel has an appointment at 8 o'clock, but I have plenty of time. For once, I might even arrive before Gabriel. In fact, we arrive at the same time. Um, morning, George. You're really early today. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to have a word with you before your appointment arrived. Did something happen? You all right? Me? Yeah, yeah, of course, I'm all right. We step into the elevator along other office workers, some of them giving Gabriel side glances, but they greet him with a good morning. Or a nod and don't try to engage him in a conversation, since he's obviously focused on me. Then, is it that kind of thing you want to talk about? Oh god, we are surrounded by colleagues! Does this guy know no shame? No, nothing of that sort. I'm sorry. Aw, what a pity. Then, what is it? I'd rather wait until we're in a more private space. He nods in agreement. The ascension to the 14th floor never felt so long and full attention. Take a seat and tell me, George. What's the matter? No beating around the bushes, huh? I made myself comfortable in a chair while Gabriel sits on top of his desk, fully focused on me. Yesterday, some gossip about the financial situation of the export section reached my ears. To my chagrin, he doesn't seem surprised. He just nods and starts pacing the floor, walking in circles in a pensive mood. I must apologize. I wanted you to hear about this from me. Not from people's gossip, but between our business trip and then Mr. Garwald's convention. Then it's true. He paces a bit more, letting out a frustrated groan. Actually, not only is it true, it's even worse. What? The board of directors wants to cut the whole export section off. Th how come? I've seen our numbers. We have been getting sustained profits in the last few years. This year so far, our profits had a 3% increase respect last year. Yeah, but they expected a steeper growth curve. The increase in oil prices has led to higher transportation costs, causing our net profit to decrease. But that's not our fault! Nobody said it was. Anticipating this issue in the last months of last year, I opened a new exports channel in several emerging countries, with new offices in Brazil and China, and agents in many other countries. I know, and they have been very busy lately. It was a good measure on your part. Right? I think so too, but... Seems it's not enough. I stared at him in silence for a long while, and then suddenly, it all comes together. I was wondering why we needed an injection of funds from Ivan Agarwal's company. That's why. Yeah, that's it. With his company's inversion, we might make it without having to close all exports business. But since it's not sure yet that they decide to invest in us, the board of advisors is hiring external help. I blinked twice, surprised. External help? What kind of external help? A financial advisor from another company. You might see him one of these days, nosing around in our computers. Oh. Is there anything I can do to help? Just do your job, George. That's all you have to do. And don't tell the rest of the department, please. Too late for that, I'm afraid. No. Then tell him everything will be alright. We are getting help and we are solving this. No need to worry about their jobs. That's difficult, boss. Of course we're all worried. I know, but try not to alarm them. Deal? I not, not knowing what else to do. Man, I'm depressed. I'm sure my co-workers didn't buy my reassuring ex explanation. I barely believe in them myself. Gabriel seems so uneasy. I work relentlessly until lunchtime, and then I only stop for a break when the rest when the last of my colleagues pat my back on his way out for lunch. Lunch. Yeah, that sounds good. I'm so tired that I can't even feel hunger. The sudden thunder roar on my stomach dares to disagree with me. Okay, okay, let's have lunch. You win. I could go in search of Jacob, but after how sour yesterday's conversation was, perhaps it would be better to eat with someone else. Miles and Rob from exports have already left. Gabriel never leaves his office for lunch, so that leaves only Kevin. Jacob! I wonder how much Jacob knows about our financial situation. Let's ask him. At this time of the day, he's usually with the resources team. Bingo! Hey, Jacob! I can't help but notice some of the office girls leaning in to share a whisper while looking at Jacob and me. Ha! I knew it! Super professional ladies not interested in gossip. My ass! George, look, I'm too busy for your drama, okay? I was looking for you because of a different kind of drama. Have you had lunch already? That seems to pique his interest. Not yet. Let's go to the cafeteria then. 
A quiet female giggle seizes out the resource team, followed by an exasperated sigh. Buy me a salad or something. I'll find us a table. Alright, a salad. Let's see what's on today's menu. Uh, Big Mac salad, Kung Pao chicken, honey, lime tofu, stir fry, corned beef and cabbage, white, fried white fish with mashed potatoes, Big Mac salad? What do you mean it said a salad? What do you mean? Okay, so the right answer is either Kung Pao chicken or honey lime tofu stir fry. So I'm gonna go with Kung Pao chicken. Rice, honey cut veggies, chicken, and Asian spices. Up Jacob's alley, I dare to say. We sit down closer to the windows. The sight is mesmerizing and frightening in equal parts. So what is it you want to talk about? Straight to the point, huh? Have you heard any rumors about the situation of the export section? He presses his lips together and nods. So you did too. You could have told me something about it. I tend not to trust in gossip, and I hope this one was particularly fake. So you have had the chance to confirm it? I asked Gabriel this morning. It seems... Seems the situation's pretty bad. Is it really out of Gabriel's hands? Not yet. He's trying to fix it, but the big fishes consider it isn't enough. That's why the investor, Mr. Garwell, keeps coming and going to the 14th floor. I mean, besides for wooing you, of course. Jacob, stop it already. Don't be a kid. What do you think will happen if we don't manage to solve the financial situation? Do you think the board will really cut the whole section off? It could happen. Yeah. Now that I've finally found a good job position, I think I'm jinxed. I'll stop complaining already. Come on, just do your best and help Gabriel as much as you can. Play well your cards with Mr. Garwell, for example. Okay, okay, I will sleep with the investor. Totally just to help the company. I don't have any, I don't have any like ulterior motives or something. Totally not. I told you I'm not interested in him in that way. Besides, Ivan is a professional. I doubt sleeping with him will influence his decision. So you were considering it. No, I wasn't. Totally not. What about you? Would it affect you if the exports team disappeared? I don't know. I'm not technically part of the section, but it's true that a good chunk of my job is helping Gabriel with organization stuff. So I'd rather things stay the way they are now. We've already finished our meal. Jacob wipes his mouth with a paper napkin and stands up. Well, keep me updated about the situation, please. And if there's anything I could do to help, Gabriel knows he can count on me. Yeah, of course. See ya. Wait, will you go to the gym after work? Probably. See you there, then. I brought my new sports clothes. Yeah, perfect. Laters. The rest of the afternoon goes by in an oppressive silence. Nobody seems in the mood of talking to the exports team. When the time to clock out arrives, they file out with the same moody faces they had the entire day. Hey guys, will you be at the bar later? Maybe? You coming? Damn, yeah. I want to get plastered. We all turn to look at him with our mouths agape. Oh man, it's just Thursday. Calm down. Yeah, I'd rather leave that for the weekend. Oh well, you're right. Maybe um, two or maybe three drinks will help me relax. Don't worry, George. I'll be right there to make sure it stops at two. And I want to drop by the gym for a little while, but after that, I'll need a drink. But just the one. I share a pointed look at Rob, who chuckles and rubs the back of his head, a little ashamed. All right, let's meet later. Here I am in my brand new gym outfit selected by Jacob himself. I look cut! God damn, I love that! He's not here yet, so I hope he doesn't stand me up. I only came here because I thought I'd find him here. Also, maybe coming here now and then, it's not a total waste of time. I mean, look at those guys. Sweaty biceps are amazing. Totally not down bad. What are you talking about? All right, let's kill some time at the threat mill. Oh, here he is. What a relief. I won't sweat like a pig for nothing. Hey, Jacob. N George, you really came. I haven't started without you. Don't I look motivated and hot? At least you will move with more ease in this kind of fabric. And about looking hot, wait until we finish the warm-ups and then tell me how hot you feel. Oh, you're such a cruel man, Jacob. <laughs> New aerodynamics, breathable clothes or not, after an hour of suffering at Jacob's hand. I'm a hot mess and not in the sexy sense, sadly. 
Only the promise of a cold beer afterwards makes me stay until Jacob deems it's time to leave. He really enjoys inflicting me pain a bit too much. As for you, lat pull down, I'll see you again one of these days. It's a threat. You were saying? Nothing. Our colleagues are way into the second or even third round by the time we arrive at the bar. Being a weekday, they soon start to bid us a good afternoon and leave. And to my surprise, Jacob does the same after just one drink. Leaving already? I'm still finishing my first beer, come on! And how many did you pretend to gobble down? Were you planning on getting plaster on a Thursday? Huh. I'm tempted to remind him of other weekdays when we ended up having one too many, but I managed to refrain myself and shut my big mouth. I only wanted to enjoy my free time with maybe one drink more. Who said anything about getting plastered? Okay, be my guest, but I won't be keeping you company. He gathers his stuff from above the bar counter and walks towards the exit, greeting goodbye our colleagues on his way out. Hey, wait! I said wait! <sighs> Didn't you hear me? Maybe I did, but I'm not in the mood for more drama today. I thought working out helped you relax. Being relaxed doesn't mean I'm not tired. <sighs> He's kept his distance from me the whole day, even physically. He doesn't usually walk so far from me. It's like he's trying to keep things from being awkward between us. Isn't it a tad bit too late for that? Good evening, George. See you tomorrow. Yeah, I'll see ya. This really pisses me off. One day he goes and kisses me, the next I'm not good enough for him. Ugh, I kicked the base of a streetlight out of anger. Th that hurts! Well, what did I expect? Better than an better an aching foot than an aching pride, although both of them are in pain right now. No, seriously, who does Jacob think he is? I admit he's better than me. More mature, more responsible, more hardworking, with a damn hot body. He's even younger than me. Isn't that a bit unfair? But I don't think that's reason enough to look down on me. You know what? I'll show Jacob that I can be not only as good as him, but better. I'll work hard, impress the bosses, and have all the co-workers eating out the palm of my hand. I know I can do it. I was on the right path anyway, so it was a question of time. Jacob won't be able to look down at me anymore. I swear it. Uh, I feel so stressed. I'm not even hungry. I lie down on my sofa and stare at the ceiling for a solid five minutes, my mind blank. Because if I let my mind wander, it will go again to my worries about my job position. Damn, if I get booted during my probation time, what are the chances of getting another good job on time to pass my father's test? No, let's not go there, please, or I won't be able to sleep a wing tonight. Let's text someone instead. Not Jacob, we've had enough of each other today. I'm afraid that leaves Kevin as always, and oh, I could check up on Yvonne. Poor Gabriel must be feeling as tense as I am. I could also text him and distract him for a short while. Gabriel! Evening, boss. Hey, George. What a pleasant surprise. I want to apologize for being an asshole at lunchtime. Oh, man, I'm already yawning. Getting up early is not for me. I relocate to my bedroom and play my favorite phone game until it's time to turn in. Also, what do you mean I'm sorry for being a, an asshole during lunchtime? I, we didn't see each other during lunch. I just feel so heavy. Perhaps I should play something on my laptop instead or... <laughs> okay. All right. And it's a Friday. Uh, morning already? I slept like a log. Also, should I have like texted Yvonne instead? I want to text Yvonne. Yvonne! Hey, Yvonne. What's up? Good evening, Jorge. How are you? Everything fine? I want to apologize for being an asshole at lunchtime. Oh, man, I'm already up. So it doesn't matter? What do you mean? Uh, is it morning already? I slept like a log. My goodness, did I really sleep for 10 hours? What am I, 60? I jump out of bed. At least I'm feeling like new and it's Friday. One day and a half more and then my day off. Hooray! Yesterday's worries seem so insignificant today. I'm sure Gabriel will find a way of solving our department problems. And I'll be there to support him and give him all the help he needs. Everything is going to be alright. <sighs> I feel so energetic. I drink my coffee with a bowl of cereal with milk. Then I remember last evening's resolution when it came to Jacob and showing him the reliable adult I've grown into. I decide to add an orange juice to my breakfast. <laughs> I spit it all at once. It turned sour. Oh, too many days sitting in the back of my fridge. 
doesn't matter. This afternoon, I'll stop by the supermarket to buy more groceries. All of them healthy and suitable for a grown-up. Let's see. Within this morning, I should finish the list of tasks Gabriel gave me yesterday, and then I'll have this afternoon and tomorrow morning to get his agenda for next week ready. I nod to myself in determination. Morning, Therese! Oh, it's Arias. I wasn't aware you knew my name. Of course, it says so on your lapel. The woman looks down at her jacket's lapel to check that I'm right and her name is right there. <laughs> I always forget. Well, have a nice morning. You too, Mr. Arias. See, it's not that difficult to charm my co-workers. It's just a matter of being aware of your surroundings. Now! Hey, watch where you're going. You almost spilled my coffee. Oh, man, I didn't see this guy. I'm sorry. I can forget about charming this one. He keeps glancing at me with contempt all the way up to his floor. The 12, between tiny sips on his cardboard cup of coffee. Never mind, I'm at work. Five minutes early, well-rested and full of energy. Good morning, boss. <laughs> so full of energy. I'm glad you're feeling energetic and in high spirits today. Yesterday's conversation made me worry. We'll solve everything. I trust in you, Gabriel. And remember, you can always count on me. There's no need to hide any issues from me anymore. Deal? Heh, <laughs> we'll see. Anyway, have you checked your emails yet? Not yet. I've ordered you some reports. You already know what to do with them. There were none last afternoon. These are from Europe, so they sent them around 4 o'clock in the morning. No time for breaks in an international company. Uh, what time is my apartment with Mr. Garwell? 9 o'clock in his office. Then I'll check a couple of minor things and get moving. Have you been to Mr. Garwell's company yet? Ah, uh, no, of course not. I hope you keep in touch with him. I'll send him your regards. Sure, please do that. Half my energy is already gone after the ton of workload he just gave me. Ah! Look, Sarah, your boyfriend's boyfriend arrived early today. Would you shut up? That's disrespectful to Mr. Reyes. I stopped walking, frozen in place. Is that Sarah from Resources? The girl Jacob is already is always scolding. Uh, I know I shouldn't do this, but I can't help eavesdropping. Just a little bit. Jacob and the word boyfriend together are too exciting to keep walking. So now he's Mr. Reyes, huh? What happened to your usual Jacob this, Jacob that? Don't tell me you finally accepted he's dating Mr. Miller's assistant. Psh, as if. He's not dating that idiot. Hey, is she bad-mouthing me? What have I done to deserve that? George, are you eavesdropping on the resources, ladies? Jacob, you gave me a fright. Of course I'm not eavesdropping. Who do you take me for, huh? He doesn't seem very convinced. I clear my throat. Well, I'll keep going. To the exports office, I mean. To work. Yeah, they'll be more useful than wasting your time strolling up and down the hallway. I was coming from Gabriel's office. I started working half an hour ago. Why are you giving me explanations? Just so you know, I'm perfectly capable of arriving early and doing my work just fine. He nods, lets out a non-committal hum, and pushes open one of the doors of the resources office. One of the girls, probably Sarah, audibly gulps, but the rest offers us a cheerful greeting. Why are you still here? Weren't you busy? Of course I am. Bye, I'll see you later. Okay, let's make my word good and start working already. The morning goes by rather slowly. My team seems in a better mood than yesterday, but Rob has a hangover and jumps in anger every time someone dares to talk to him. Apart from that, everything seems fine. I finished my morning task in time. That deserves a break. Let's have lunch. I wonder if Jacob is in the mood for eating together. If he isn't, I guess I can always ask Kevin. Eh, uh, Jacob! I put my computer in sleep mode and grab my jacket and backpack. Time for a lunch break. You guys going up to the cafeteria? My colleagues share a dubious look. Maybe? Who are you having lunch with? You usually have lunch with Mr. Reyes, right? I nod. Yeah, I was going to ask him now. Uh, then, we're going up too. See you at the cafeteria in five. Wait, so they weren't joining me if I was on my own or with Kevin? That stings! I decide to shut my big mouth and walk out of the office instead, faking obliviousness. After the conversation I heard this morning, completely not on purpose, I'm a bit hesitant about stepping into the resources office. 
But Jacob is often there, so I should. My decision is taken out of my hands because at that very moment, Jacob appears in the hallway, coming out of another office. I sigh in relief. Hey, Jacob, let's go up for lunch. Hmm, okay. You can't keep hidden how ecstatic you are about eating with me, I see. Oh, huh? sorry, I was lost in thought. By the way, any news from Gabriel about the exports issue? He had a meeting at Ivan's company today, so we'll see. But please don't mention any of this to the rest of the exports team. They will probably join us at the cafeteria. I see. You don't want them to worry too much. Exactly. I'll be discreet then. There's a table for four or five people over there. Want me to take it? Oh, yeah. Yes, please. Miles and Rob will arrive in a minute. Okay. Buy my lunch. You know what I like, or so I expect. Of course. Let's see if I remember what it was. Uh, nope, not that. Fried pork with corn, no. Greek-style codfish with cream potatoes. That's safe. Teriyaki salmon, much safer. Sweet and sour chicken with rice. Teriyaki salmon. This looks definitely nice, and I bet it tastes as good as it looks. I stopped a few times in my way to our table, mindful of not losing the balance of dishes and drinks on the tray. Good appetite, Mr. Harris. Ah, I see you also enjoy a good pork chop. <laughs> My guilty pleasure now and then, although my wife would scold me if she saw. You're Mr. Miller's assistant, right? I think I've seen you around. Yeah, I'm still rather new in the company. When I finally sit down in front of Jacob and start distributing dishes, glasses, and cutlery, he's staring at me in disbelief. What was that just now? What was what? That act. You carried out while coming from the counter. It wasn't an act. It was just me being civil. Then it's the first time I saw you being civil since you started working here. Or should I say, being an ass kisser? It seems you've been spending too much time with that Kevin Jones guy. His bootlicker behavior rubbed off on you. I was not being a bootlicker, and I've only had lunch with him twice, I think. It was about time that I started introducing myself properly to the company. That's all. Is that wrong? No, just unexpected. You were the one who told me to improve my act and my image, right? Touche, but try not to look like a creep while doing it. What the? Oh, shut up, your team member's already here. Smile, George. Oh, it's Rob. We're here. I tried to smile during the rest of our meal. Also, I swear, this guy makes me fume in anger every single time, and that's hot. And drum roll, please. I did it. Finish dealing with Gabriel's agenda for next week before the end of the afternoon. Am I good am, or am I good? However, I'm dead tired. I've been talking on the phone so much that my throat is sore and my poor eyes are in no better condition after so many hours in front of a screen. But now I can send this to Gabriel and impress him. And tomorrow morning, well, I'm sure he'll find more tasks for me. Not as if he's going to give me the morning off. Already you done? You going to the bar, George? I think I'll drop by the gym. Afterwards, I'll decide. I'm a bit tired, to be honest. In fact, I'm only going to the gym so I can show off in front of Jacob. If it was up to me, I'd go straight back home now and vegetate on my sofa until bedtime. I greet my co-workers goodbye and gather my belongings. George? You're early. Have you already finished your work of the day? Yeah, I finished my work of the week, yeah. You heard it. I'm so fast, I managed to do tomorrow's task in advance. As long as they are correct and you didn't make a mess. Of course everything's correct. I'm a professional assistant. Sure, I trust you. You don't. I uh, just don't mind. But it's a good thing. The more people in the company knows you, the more easier to get into another department in case exports go to hell. That's the most depressing idea I've heard in a while. I don't want to be hired by another department. I want to stay in exports with Gabriel. I know. Sorry, was that a line? Wow, Jacob Ray is apologizing. Nothing to write home about. Now come on, start working out, or at least leave me alone. I focus on the now familiar torture instruments, but after a while I'm dead tired. Not even the loud techno music that comes out of the speakers manages to entertain me. Jacob, hey. Hmm? What now? The girl in resources office, Sarah. Is she your assistant or something? <laughs> what? Oh, George, isn't it a bit late to start with jealousy, huh? The hell? I'm not jealous! Why would you, right? Uh, now he seems upset. If I said something, I shouldn't. To be honest, whenever he starts pestering me, I blurt to whatever comes to my mouth without stopping to think first. Ah, never mind, I'm too tired to think. I need a nice warm shower and my sofa, please. Ah, at last, 
Cold beer, a bag of crisp, and my sofa. This is the life. Wait, this sounds like the dream of a middle-aged man. I'm not even 28, for God's sake. Oh, uh, what am I doing in my life? I'm half tempted to text my party buddies to see what they're up to. It's a Friday night. I'm sure there's a party somewhere. Calm down and stop freaking out, Jorge. You're doing fine. Remember, you must focus on your career. Job is a bit stressful right now, but life happens. It's okay. It'll be solved somehow. At least I don't hold a position of responsibility like Gabriel. I'm not ready for something like that. It can wait until I'm managing my father's company. And until then, I agree not to get wasted every weekend, but I need to do something else if my life working like an adult feels nice. But man, there's more to life. Lying on my sofa with a beer and a movie would definitely feel better with a hunky hot guy in my arms. No complaints on my part then. Jacob's body comes immediately to mine. God, he's hot! It's been so long since the last time I got to see his coming face with my- His what? His what? Wait. I let out a longing sigh. Alright, let's stop whining. First of all, I need to show Jacob that I'm as good or better than him. Today was a good start, but I could do better. And then, when I finally have Jacob having to publicly admit that I beat him, then... Uh, I don't know. He begging me to take him back as my boyfriend doesn't sound very realistic, to be honest. I'll cross that bridge when the time comes. But now, let's enjoy our relaxing evening at home. One TV movie later, I'm starting to crave some human contact, so I take out my phone and check what remains on my contacts list. Uh, ooh, boss of Jacob, boss of Jacob, boss of Jacob, boss! Good evening, boss. Hey, George. What a pleasant surprise. What apologize? Wait, what the hell? Um, what if I text Jacob? Evening, Jacob. Hey, George. What a pleasant surprise. I want to apologize for being an asshole at lunch. The hell? So apparently, regardless of who you text, um, the line of dialogue is gonna be the same, but then again, like, this game is still in early access, so I'm not surprised that there are still a couple of bugs like that. But anyway, that's all the time I have for today's episode. Thank you all so much for watching. We will be back with another episode of Exodus Assault soon enough, so hey, uh, look forward to that. But in the meantime, thank you all so much for watching. Hope you all have a lovely rest of the day, and as always, I'll be seeing you in the next video. This is Lion, signing off. Ciao.